Hi everyone, my name's Finn and welcome back to my journey to get the build of this 41 foot Oyster Smack finished. So before I kick off with any of the work that I've been doing over the last month, I thought I'd share with you guys a little story that I was told by my boss here in the boatyard about quite an uncanny connection between him and the boat that was up against Tally Ho in the 1927 Fastnet race. So let's hear all about it, shall we? Okay, so a lot of you who watch my videos are going to be aware that I spent quite a bit of time working over in America on Leo Gordon's project, uh, Tally Ho. So now I'm back here in England and I've got myself some work in the boatyard here where my boat is. And Peter Dodds, who is the owner of the boatyard, now my boss, um, had quite an interesting story for me about the whole Tally Ho Fastnet race and a bit of history that I'm sure some of you guys will find quite an interesting. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about it, Peter? Well, I've always known about Tally Ho because um, uh, I used to sail on a, uh, a schooner called Lagoletta, and Tally Ho and Lagoletta were the only two boats to finish the 1927 Fastnet race, which was the second Fastnet race. And I think there were, you'll probably know better than I do, but I think there were 18 boats in total that started the race, but only the two of them finished. And uh, Lagoletta was the first boat home by I think 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So they were very close, the two of them. Uh, and uh, Tally Ho won on uh, corrected time uh, because I think she's, she's a little bit smaller than Lagoletta. But I've always known about Tally Ho and I saw the articles about uh, when she was rescued and uh, uh, the restoration started. So I've always had an interest in her. But I sailed on Lagoletta for uh, 10 years, loosely 10 years from, let me think, 1967 to 1976, something like that. And as um, Finn will show you on the, uh, a picture I've got, we've got here, it gives her a brief history, but Basically, the chap I worked for in London, who was a motor car uh, engineer, Chris Lawrence, he, he and a friend, Chris Spender, bought her in, I think about 1966, uh, uh, something like that. And she was in a bit of a poor state, but Chris had quite a thriving business and he spent a lot of money on her. And eventually owned her solely himself, Chris Lawrence. And um, she was based at the Birth and Boat company in, in Livington and m an immense amount of money was poured into her. Uh, she, she was all Bermudan rigged when Chris got her but eventually had a new foremast made so she went back to having a gaff sail on the foremast but still had the non-original Bermudan sail on the mainmast but uh, had a redecked, refastened, new accommodation and I sailed on her uh, every summer for as I said, for eight to nine years. We did, there was a commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the first Fastnet race, uh, and we did that, which will be 1975. Um, and we'd done the sort of channel race and compares cows races to a sort of um, uh, qualifying races for the Fastnet race. And she was a really lovely, lovely schooner, very, very powerful powerful enough to keep driving on in really heavy weather, made all the crew sick, <laughs> but uh, she was okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I had some very, very pleasant sailing on her. 1976, uh, I left, I stopped working for, well, early 77, I stopped working for Chris Lawrence, and the, the company was sadly in bad, bad state financially by then. And there was a lot of money owing to the Birth and Boat Company and I think either the Birth and Boat Company or the bank ended up with Lagoletta. And she then disappeared and we, I was still in touch with quite a few of the other people who sailed on her with us. Sadly Chris Lawrence has now died three or four years ago, uh, but I've been in touch with him all along and he was a, 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 not only was he my boss, he was a friend. But Lagoletta has disappeared, and we all want to know where Lagoletta has gone. The only thing we've ever heard <coughs> was that she got on the rocks somewhere out in the Caribbean. But whether that was final, whether it was true, 
we don't know. So she's disappeared and we'd love to know where she went to or where she is. Yeah, so if there's any of you guys that are watching the video now and might know anybody that possibly has some information or you have some information yourself on the whereabouts of La Galeta is or you know, if she's even around anymore, we'd love to know. Um, so I'll leave a, a link in the description below for an email you can get in touch, touch with us and if there's any information we'd love to hear about it. So thanks Peter, that's a really interesting story. And um, I've got some photos here in a um, newspaper cutout from um, a magazine. I'm not sure what magazine it is, okay. but it, it's uh, about Chris Lawrence uh, and his and Larga letter. Okay. But it it lists a lot of the history and what we did with her when I was involved. But it'd be lovely one day when uh, Tally Ho's finished uh, for the two to meet up again. So I need to say a huge thanks to all of you guys who reached out after the last video and got in contact with some really helpful information on the final stages of wiring up this wind turbine system I've got. So after doing a bit more studying, I finally felt confident I knew enough about the last connections and where everything needed to go. So following one of your guys' diagrams, I got the whole system wired up. So all I need to do now is fit the lights in the barn and connect all the wires up and turn it all on and give it a test and see if it all works.
Okay, so now I've got the coach roof removed. Now I've decided the next job I'm going to do is to remove the complete transom assembly. So the reason I'm removing the transom is there's quite a severe patch of rot in the fashion piece that meets the counter stern. So the reason why this is getting done now is because I'm going to get on with the deck structure first and get that all finished before I move inside the boat and get on with the interior. This will all have to be rebuilt and finished off um, with the correct horn timbers on the outside um, that then the stanchion rails will run into. knees and rebuild them with new timber. Um, I made this decision uh, just because overlooking the wall um, there's quite a lot of nasty checks in the faces of the timber. In every one there's a really big knot. So as these pieces are quite a feature of the counter stern of the boat so I'm going to get some more wood in and remake these pieces along with all of the rest of the transom. All right, let's see if I can show you guys the nice big space I've got to work in to remove the bolts for these two transom knees that are in the, close to the center line of the boat. So let's get the light down in there. So there's the two forward bolts we've got to get to. And if I zoom in a bit, Right up in the back there is where I've got to get the two aft bolts off of these knees. <laughs> Okay, so I've been working on dismantling the transom. Uh, I've got all the transom boards off of the back and removed the two outside knees. And then to remove the two center knees, there's a long piece of threaded rod drove straight through the knee and out the other side of the deck beam below uh, with the nut on the bottom and the nut on the top. So the four nuts on the two forward bolts came off pretty easily as the access inside the counter stern of the boat isn't too small and made it quite easy to get in there with a socket and a spanner to undo the nuts. But the two aft bolts are a little bit more tricky as where the counter stern tapers up at the end, the bolts are really close to the back. So as you saw in the video of undoing the 
nuts on the bottom from inside there's only a couple of inches of room to be able to get the nut off the bottom of the bolt and then actually to reach it um, because you've got to get down into the aft hatch and where the counter stern tapers off so sharply to actually reach up to that point um, even with a long adjustable spanner right in my fingertips it was still quite tricky to get to them but got all the nuts off and have now found a bit of a problem so what has been used to fix these knees down are 16 mil galvanized threaded rod now these are big coach screws for the outside knees but where these knees go straight through the deck beams on the inside of the boat they've used about eight inches long 16 mil threaded rod and drove that through and put a nut on both ends now being oak that the knees are made out of what has happened in this case is the tannins have reacted with the bolts and they've swelled up um, I don't know how much but so much that it is seized solid and there's absolutely no movement on the bolts at all uh, I've tried to get inside spanning a plate across the hull to get a lever underneath it tried mushrooming over the top of the bolt over the nut to try and wind them out and uh, don't seem to be getting any movement Unfortunately, I've run out of time. I've got to get on and make this next video for you guys. But that will give me a bit of time to scratch my head and think about how exactly I'm going to remove these. As I don't really want to chop them off. But at the end of the day, it won't be the end of the world as I'm going to remake them anyway. Uh, it might be just the easiest thing and save time. Thanks to all of you guys that have shown so much support towards the project. Uh, watching the videos and liking, subscribing, commenting it really helps with growing the channel and gives me a great encouragement and inspiration to keep documenting this journey and sharing it with you guys. So I just want to say a huge thanks to all of you who have supported the project by donating through my Amazon wish list or becoming patrons. Your support and donations are truly appreciated and are a great help with moving forward with this project. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. It's not sanding, that's my wind turbine. Is it? Yeah. It's um it just sand. It's where the it does, doesn't it? It's funny. with every, every, now this last month has been a bit weird it's, um, it has made um, but 